You are sitting reading the paper dated August of 1905, when suddenly you are jolted forward. Surprised, you lower the paper as the train whistles to a stop. As you step off the train, you are greeted by the sights and sounds of Buffalo, New York. As you leave the train station, you start your journey to the hotel. Sauntering down the street, you see the sun crossing over the horizon. Further into your journey, you hit an intersection. Stunned with dazzling light, you stop and stare in awe at the beautiful marquee standing atop the building in front of you, the Lafayette Hotel. You also see the words fireproof shining down at you. The hotel was one of the first to use poured concrete and steel framing technique, allowing the building to be fireproof. You stare at the gorgeous 225 room, 7 floor hotel. You gaze upon the red brickwork of the building built in the French Renaissance style. You walk towards the front door, and as you start to swing the door open, you can hear the audible buzz of people in the lobby. You can almost hear some of the quotes of praise whispered as you enter. The best that science, art, and experience can offer for the comfort of the traveling public. One of the most perfectly appointed and magnificent hotels in the country. You stop at the coat check to have them hang your coat in a beautiful mahogany walled coat room. You start to walk around the lobby, passing by the spectacular crystal chandelier hung ballroom, oak paneled men's bar and dining room. You look up and see the moonlight shining through the lead glass skylights. You stop by the check-in desk. The attendant hands the key over to you and says, You may want to check out some of our wonderful amenities. Did you know each of our rooms features cold and hot water, as well as their own personal telephone? You're taken aback by this. We also offer luxury service and host a billiards room, reading room, and restaurants off the lobby. You decide to ask the attendant a little bit about the history of the hotel. He says, our hotel opened up about a year ago now, in 1904. A little off schedule as we were expected to open for the 1901 Pan Am. The building itself was designed by the firm Bethune Bethune and Fox. Let me take a little break in the story to tell you a little bit about this firm. Bethune Bethune and Fox was a firm run by the couple Louise and Robert Bethune. The really important part of this is the first name I mentioned, Louise Bethune. When we think of architects, even nowadays, we almost always think about old white men. Louise Bethune was a female architect in the late 19th and early 20th century. That wasn't a thing back in 1898 when the Lafayette Hotel was being designed. In fact, Louise Bethune was the first female architect to be recognized by the American Institute of Architects. Let's dive into the history of Bethune a bit. Bethune was born in 1856 in Waterloo, New York. This is only a few short miles from Seneca Falls, New York location of the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848, the birthplace of the women's rights movement. Bethune was a feminist from the beginning. As she was a child, she was tutored until age 11, was strong in math, and had an aptitude for designing houses. She then graduated from high school in Buffalo, New York in 1874. From there, she went to be a draftsman for the firm of Richard Waite and F.W. Calkins. It was at this firm she met her future husband and business partner, Robert Bethune. She and Robert started their own firm in 1881. While Louise Bethune did design the Lafayette Hotel, her focus for the rest of her career was designing schools. By the time that Bethune had died in 1913, she had designed 18 schools in the Buffalo area. The hotel had two additions built later on and operated under the Duffy family for three generations. The hotel lobby was also converted to an art modern aesthetic in the 1940s. Unfortunately, the Hotel Lafayette went down with a sinking ship that was Buffalo, New York. Out-of-town ownership starting in the 1960s furthered the issue, as very few repairs were made to the building. As time progressed, it fell more and more into disarray. It wasn't until 2010 did something happen to the hotel. Rocco Termini headed the project to restore the hotel to its former glory. During the $35 million restoration, Things were uncovered as boards were removed and paint peeled away, some of which was the original terracotta herringbone tile seen in the soon-to-be Pan American Grill, a wall painting by Impressionist Abbott Graves, and an old speakeasy found under the floorboards. The hotel was officially added to the National Registry of Historic Places on August 19, 2010. The hotel is home to apartments, extended stay rooms, and businesses such as the Pan American Grill. The lobby of the hotel was restored to the lobby of the 1940s art modern style, featuring an inlaid wood mosaic of the history of aviation and trade in Buffalo, a motif carried throughout the entire lobby. I tell you the story as a tale of hope 
and is a bright look towards the future. Buffalo has made many mistakes in its past, but it isn't too late to fix them. We need to bring back people from the suburbs into the city, and to do that we need success stories like the Hotel Lafayette.